Hey guys, I'm Dr. Paul Lynch. I'm Dr. Tori McJunkin. And I'm Camilla Binks, a nurse practitioner. Thanks for joining us for this episode of The Pain Show. Some of you have been following along. Uh, we see that we have at least three subscribers now. Mm -hmm. I subscribe. Right here. I subscribe. I su oh, so that, we're the ones. So <laughs> if, you, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, take a moment to subscribe below, like our videos, share our videos. Um, we think that this is an opportunity for us to make a difference by educating people about chronic pain. That's right. On today's episode, we're gonna talk about one of my favorite topics, neuromodulation. And Tori McJunkin is here with me today, as he always is, but my best friend for a long time. And Tori has become one of the world's experts in neuromodulation, so I'm gonna to defer to you a lot today, ask you questions. Uh, Camilla Binks was nice enough to join us. Thank you. I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of our patients in the clinic and how neuromodulation has changed some of their lives. Absolutely. Um, so I hope you guys will enjoy our episode. Tori, uh, why don't we go back? When mm -hmm. did we first learn about spinal cord stimulation? Spinal cord stimulation is a version of neuromodulation. Yeah. We first learned about it way back when, uh, when we learned about your mother-in-law's pain. Well, I think that's right. Yeah, I forgot that. So we were, I was gonna be a psychiatrist, you were gonna be an emergency room doctor. Some people have followed us along and they know that mm -hmm. story. Um, that night that I came over to your house and said, this is the career that I wanna do for the rest of my life. One of the things I had read about was spinal cord stimulation. That's right. And my mother-in-law had severe, terrible pain in her abdomen and her spine. Um, and one of the things I read about that maybe could have helped her was spinal cord stimulation. And so as we were reading about these mm -hmm. procedures, this was one that grabbed our attention, right? Absolutely, yeah, it was so cutting edge and so, you know, really could treat the underlying source of the pain. Right. So, it's a device that uses electrical energy and yep. essentially turns off pain signals. Huh. And so it can help all sorts of different people. Generally, we say that it helps people more with neuropathic pain, and that's pain that comes from a nerve origin versus like arthritis type of pain. Right. Now, I think that's being challenged, and there's some new innovative things, right. uh, new innovative ways to use it, but that's kind of the building blocks for when this all started. You know, cancer pain, neuromodulation can be an option, but it's not the classic treatment that's that we're right. doing yeah. with cancer pain. But low back pain from a surgery, that might be the number one diagnosis. Camilla, right. you were telling us about one of your patients earlier. Yes. What have you seen with uh, low back pain, for example? So um, I always explain to patients that back surgery isn't always a fix mm -hmm. for back pain. Yep. You know, back surgery is usually if there's a spondylolisthesis that you yep. talked about last time. That's hard to say. It's very you hard say to say. It like five times <laughs> <No>. in a row. <laughs> um, but oftentimes surgery, they go in and they they. Uh, mechanically fix the, the issue with the spine and they may still continue to have neuropathic pain or, oh, right. or back pain. Yeah. So um, multiple patients uh, of mine and, and mm -hmm. yours um, come in with continued low back pain after um, surgery. And yeah. so by using the neuromodulation or electricity to, to stimulate the spine, it helps to quell the, uh, the pain. And have you had patients in, in the clinic that have done really well with this? Yes, um, absolutely. You and um, I would also say that oftentimes patients are able to decrease or completely discontinue opioids after wow. after stimulation. That's wow. right. Dr. McChunk, would you tell us a little bit about like a spinal cord stimulation for um, someone who's had back surgery and still sure. hurts? Does it work? Well, so, you know, I think that's the thing is somebody gets to the point, oftentimes it's a big process to get to the point where you need back surgery. Yeah. And then they're like, finally, I'm just going to have back surgery and I'm just going to fix the problem. Right. Uh, but unfortunately, like Camilla said, a lot of times, you know, they wake up and then over the next few months, right. they think they're going to get better and better. But unfortunately, their pain gets bad. And there's a condition that's called post laminectomy syndrome. <laughs> or some people call it failed back surgery syndrome. Huh. But essentially we think that that's a nerve condition, a neuropathic pain condition, where even if you did more back surgery, this person's still gonna have chronic pain. Wow. So to answer your question, um, there is a lot of research on spinal cord stimulation. And spinal cord stimulation you know, is evolving and cutting edge and there's a lot of new things, but basically all the new studies say that it has around an 80% chance of helping somebody. Wow. Uh, so yeah. a patient who has already gone through everything, has had back surgery, and they still hurt, and they come to you, and you're saying spinal cord stimulation, like 80% of those patients would get better? Um, so yeah, so there's two steps to it. One is called the trial, okay. and that's it's pretty neat, actually. because Do you have like a model where you could show us what a trial looks like? Yeah, I could show, so I have this model here, okay. and so the way that I think of it is kind of like a 
labor epidural. So like a pregnant oh. lady is getting a little catheter to infuse fluid in there when they're giving birth. Okay. Um, we do the same thing, although it's not for birth, but we put in these little catheters that are flexible, like little noodles. We slide them up and then they use electrical energy at the tip. Hmm. And so at the end of that trial, we take the needles out, we tape this to their back, and then they essentially wear it around for the next week and they see if it's going to help them. So this isn't the permanent procedure. This, yeah, exactly. Huh. So there's two stages. One's the trial. Okay. And it's, you know, amazing. It's like one of the few things in medicine where it's like, try it before you buy it. You really yeah. get to try it out and see if it's going to like help. test driving a car. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you can really see like, is this the right therapy for me? And it's not the right therapy for everyone. Right. But when it works, it's, uh, it's amazing. And you said the number 80%, and I just wanted to hone in on that. When we first started teaching, I mean, we're talking 14 years ago yeah. now. Um, we told most of our patients about 50% of That's patients right. will yeah. do well with this. But the new data from multiple companies is coming out showing that about 80% of their patients get relief from this modality. That's right. Yeah, we call it back in the day, you know, it was called the 50-50 club. And yeah. so you had a 50% chance of this therapy helping you long term. Yeah. And like you said, like there's been so much innovation in the last, right. I would say especially the last 10 years. Yeah. Um, where all these kind of big companies, technology companies are coming out with these products right. that make this massive difference. And so the difference between 80% of people doing well and 50% is, is huge because that means most people get benefit. And we've been talking a lot about spinal cord stimulation and thank you for showing us uh, for, the, for the viewers, but we'll put an electrode in the epidural space and when we turn it on, we're interrupting pain signals on the way to the brain through the spinal cord. But there's other types of neuromodulation as well. Yep, um, that's right. Would you mind telling us a couple of the other options for neuromodulation? Yeah, and a lot of these, so back when we did our training, there was something called peripheral nerve stimulation. Yeah. And that's instead of putting these little leads with energy on the spinal canal area, that goes on the nerves themselves, nerves that okay. are damaged. Like peripheral nerves, like in your arm or your leg. That's or, right, like right. you would, like your sciatic nerve, the biggest okay. nerve in the body. So sometimes wow. you'll use that for foot. You or can leg. stimulate the sciatic. You can. That's it, amazing. Yep, you can, the femoral nerve, same kind of thing in the front of the body. Wow. So one of the things, some of the early research on this stuff is that peripheral nerve stimulation worked really well for certain kinds of pain. And okay. spinal cord stimulation worked really well. But what we've seen in the last few years is there's been a few companies that have come out with these really kind of minimally invasive peripheral nerve stimulation wow. uh, treatment options. And so for some patients, that may be simpler, easier, um, and more effective for their pain condition. So peripheral nerve stimulation can work better for certain conditions. Okay. And so there are all these peripheral nerves all over your body and they all transmit pain. Wow. And so same thing, we do a trial where you place a little uh -huh. tiny lead along those nerves and then you watch and see if the pain feels better. And I wanted to show the viewers at home just some of this technology because it, it still blows me away. Um, you can hold that, thank you. So I just wanted to show this to the viewers at home. I kind of feel like Vanna White. <laughs> <laughs> the viewers at home. Uh, this is the IPG. This communicates with an electro that you could put directly on a nerve. And if you look, this is smaller than the head of my pinky. And so this is what we would place in with a very tiny incision. And then you actually wear a battery externally. And so you can put this on the area of your pain and then take it off as you want. And what we're learning more about neuromodulation is it doesn't have to be on all the time, right? That's right, yeah. There's some kind of carryover effect where you could stimulate for let's say four hours a day yeah. and then you might get 16 hours of relief. That's and then one of get... the biggest questions that my patients ask is um, if they have to charge the battery and how long is it Right. How long does it last? Would you t tell our viewers a little bit about the difference between a rechargeable battery and a non-rechargeable sure. battery? Yeah. So when this, you know, what's interesting is when this therapy first came out, so it was actually 1967. Is that right? A neurosurgeon, yeah. <laughs> wow. And so way back when, and they had, you know, these giant batteries powering these devices externally. Um, and then as, you know, things have progressed, first the battery that we had was actually used radio frequency energy. So it was external, similar to what you're showing there. Yeah. Then they came out with batteries uh, that were rechargeable, um, and, sorry, non-rechargeable. Um, and so you the, the battery would have a certain lifespan. And uh -huh. so you would implant the battery. Maybe it would work for three years, five years. And then you have to surgically go and take out the battery and put in a new battery. And that's convenient in some ways because people turn it on they and then they kind of forget about it. Uh, then the new innovation, actually, when we were doing our training, it kind of first came out 
and it was the rechargeable battery. And so mm -hmm. the benefit yep. of that one is you didn't have to go back in surgically. So it might yeah. last for 10 years. And, and they were smaller, right? They were yeah. thinner, smaller, right. so less invasive. Yep. Yeah, so this here's an example, example of, one, yeah. of like the modern day uh, rechargeable battery. So, right. um, and that that might look big for you know patients who are looking, but compared to what we used to use, I mean, we used to use like right. you know they yeah. look like a brick, and so this yeah. is actually really really small um, compared to what we had in the past. So, so what I'm hearing is for many different nerve based pain conditions. Um, we can use electricity now instead of local anesthetic or steroid or whatever injections you have. We can actually use electricity at very, very small doses to interrupt pain signals. So would you say it the same way? Not yeah. only pain, though, but there is a new product oh. out now oh, yeah. where That's you can true. actually stimulate the bladder um, yeah. for That's urinary right. incontinence and urinary yeah. retention. And you recently had a patient in our clinic we that did. we did. Yeah. Would you Tori tell and us I about both did. Yeah. yeah, she had suffered for years with. Um, urgency where she was having to get up mm -hmm. multiple times during the night um, to urinate and she was saying like 20 or 40 times at night. Yeah, wow. terrible. So and she had no quality of life. None. Huh. Yeah. She's and going to the bathroom all the time. Yeah. So uh, we worked her up, Tori and I, and we did a trial of mm -hmm. the Axonix. Yep, that's and right. she, I remember her coming into the clinic and saying, can I just leave it in? Do you yeah. have to take out the trial? Oh, during the trial. During the trial because it had worked so well for yeah. her. and. She's probably, what, two or three months post now, yeah. and still, uh, she says that sh she went from 20 or 40 times per night having to wake up and urinate to like two or three. Yeah. So it completely changed her life. Absolutely, yeah, I just saw her a couple days ago. But yeah, I mean, it's an incredible technology that we have now, and it really wasn't available before. So the newest versions of it, the battery is so tiny, mm -hmm. and basically that stays with her, and she recharges in this system, she recharges through her skin, every couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, yeah. obviously massive dramatic difference. And for her, it, there was a little bit of the pain issue, but a lot of it was the incontinence issue and you know, completely changed your life. Yeah, and I think when we could talk about you know, stories that we've had yeah. you know, over the years, but one that always kind of you know, uh, means a lot to me is when I first came to town, I was working at Mayo Clinic. We were both working mm -hmm. at Mayo and treating patients and this patient came um, who had such severe pain um, in his arm that he was actually there for an amputation. Yeah. Um, and uh, he had this terrible injury and they sent him up to the pain clinic and said, is there anything else you guys can do? As I talked to this gentleman, he had already tried spinal cord stimulation in the neck and he still had pain. And he basically says, are there any other options? Because if not, I, I'm gonna get an amputation. I mm -hmm. can't continue to take this pain. We've learned over the last 15 or 20 years that the amputation doesn't even stop the yeah, pain. Yeah, often that doesn't help. Right, and so, um, so I talked to him and we decided to do a peripheral stimulator. Mm -hmm. So the same way, it's not all spinal cord stimulation, but peripheral nerve stimulation or um, even using stimulation for bladder control as you talked about. So with this gentleman, we ended up doing peripheral stem under his clavicle to the plexus of nerves that went to his arm and we took away like 80% of his pain and it helped him save his arm. And so um, spinal cord stimulation for me has always had yeah. such a close yeah. place to my heart. Have you had stories like that over the years, Tori, that meant a lot to you? Yeah, we have so, so many stories like that where people who couldn't walk more than just a few feet, all of a sudden they can walk you know, several blocks or wow. they can walk their dog. Just like simple things that yeah. you didn't think would make a huge difference makes a dramatic difference in someone's life. One thing I wanna mention based on that story, just because that was you know, 15 years ago, 14 years ago, What's crazy is we talked about these new technologies, these yeah. new companies, yeah. and what's so interesting is there's some really big research studies looking at people who've tried this in the past and yeah. it didn't work, that's right. and using the newer technology, yeah. and it works. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that's been, for me, that's really rewarding because these people have done everything they can right. to right. get better, and they've tried everything, and they had surgery, and you know it goes yeah. on and on and on, and they're just like, they have just a teeny bit of hope, yeah. and then basically you do something and it makes a massive difference. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you said hope. I think that's one of the things right, that we, very, yeah. we do a lot in our clinic is we do provide hope for patients. Um, our mentor, Dr. Rax at Texas Tech, um, I think one of the things he did so well was provide hope mm -hmm. to say, no matter what your pain is, no matter where it's coming from, we are going to figure this out and help you, you know, solve it. That's right. Guys, thanks for joining us on uh, today's episode of The Pain Show. If you want more information about neuromodulation, you can check out our video page. You can go to our website at arizonapain.com. Feel free to like us and share us and subscribe to our channel. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey as we learn more and teach you guys more about pain.